This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Today we're going to be learning how to build a floating button in your app with UIKit and Swift. A floating button is basically this button you see at the bottom right here, which is usually popularly used by a lot of apps to allow user inputs and quickly get to important actions in your app. We'll talk about creating the button, laying it out, adding a shadow, and customizing it to meet your needs. If that sounds good, drop a like down below, hit subscribe while you're at it, and let's jump right in. We're going to start by opening up Xcode and creating a new project. We'll stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this project floating button. And we want to make sure we stick with Swift UI kit for the lifecycle and storyboard for the interface. We'll be working programmatically. Go ahead and continue, save the project wherever you'd like. I'll toss it onto my desktop. And first things first, we're gonna close this right panel, expand our Xcode window, and jump into our viewcontroller.swift file. I'll also go ahead and pick a simulator here. Maybe we'll go with the 12 Pro Max, and I'll hit the run button just to load it up and see our empty app, hopefully, on our simulator here. And then we'll get into creating the button itself. So while that runs over there, let's talk about creating the button. So a floating action button generally is a circular button at the bottom right corner of your view. Uh, usually it has a pretty nice drop shadow and when you tap it, it's usually an input of some kind. So we're gonna create it here in view to load and uh, rather we can actually even create it out here and then we'll talk about maybe abstracting it to make it reusable. So I'm gonna create a private constant here called a floating button. And this floating button is going to be a UI button, just like that. And with this UI button, what we first want to do is, well, obviously create it. So here we're gonna say button is a UI button. We're gonna go ahead and set the masks to bounds property on the layer to true. And the reason we're gonna do that is because we're gonna set a corner radius. We're gonna also go ahead and say the corner radius here is going to be the height of the button uh, divided by two. So let's make our button 60 by 60. So we're gonna make the corner radius 30. And then here we're gonna go ahead and say CG rect 00, zero. we're gonna say 60 and 60, just like that. And before I go ahead and give it an image, let me go ahead and set a background color on it. We're gonna go with system pink, go with any color that you find that works for your app. And then lastly, down here, we'll go ahead and return it. Now in view to load, we're gonna go ahead and add this as a sub view. And we also want to lay out this particular button. So we need to override the view to layout sub views function. And we'll need to go ahead and assign this a frame or add constraints. So we already know that the width and height is going to be 60 by 60. But the thing we care about in this case is the X and Y. So the X is going to be the width of the view minus 60 minus some margin. So we're gonna say eight is gonna be the margin. You can make that 68 if you want. I'm gonna leave them separate so we can just figure out what each of those constants are. And for the Y itself, we're gonna say this is going to be view that frame, that size, that height. And once again, minus 60 and minus eight. You might want to also go ahead and subtract the safe area insets bottom insets. Uh, but instead of doing that, we're just gonna stick with this and see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and give this a run. We still haven't done the shadow yet and we haven't added an icon, but let's at least see if our button is in fact showing up on our UI. So it should show up at the bottom right, which in fact it is. It looks a little close to both the right and the left. So there's a couple things we could do ahead, do here to fix it. So one thing is for the uh, Y, we're gonna subtract 100 and we're gonna convert this to be 70. So let's go ahead and give that a run and let's see if that button position looks a little better. All right, so that definitely looks a little better. So the next thing we wanna talk about is the icon and the shadow. So the icon is a pretty pretty uh, obvious piece, so we want the button to be somewhat discernible what it does. And the shadow we kinda want because generally you have contents behind this button and the button should sit above the content. So we wanna have a depth effect more or less. So let's go ahead and do the uh, icon first. We're gonna say, go ahead and set an image uh, for the particular button. I'm gonna create the image right up above and it's gonna be for the normal state. 
So up here we're going to say image is going to be a UI image and we're going to go ahead and create it with a system image and also a configuration. So we're going to go ahead and do this one here. The system image we're going to go with is a plus sign and the configuration here is a UI image and I believe it's called a symbol configuration and you can go ahead and pass in a font size here, a weight and a scale. We're just going to go with font size and uh, weight here. So maybe we'll go with 32 and medium. You really got to play with this number to get the look and feel that you particularly want. So we'll see what this looks like and adjust as needed. So I think it looks pretty good. The one other thing that we might want to go ahead and do is change the uh, tints color here. So we might want to go ahead and say make this white. And we'll also go ahead and set the title color to be white, just in case we ever change in, uh, change our mind here and uh, assign a title to this. You might want to optionally change the configuration of the uh, image itself if you have a custom image. So cool, so there is our button. It's looking pretty darn good. Let's add the shadow and let's connect an action. So how do we add a shadow? So adding a shadow, once again, deals with the layers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to tidy this up just a little bit. So these two properties here deal with the corner radius. And the other thing that we want to go ahead and do is add a shadow. So the first thing we'll do is let me comment out this guy and I'm going to go ahead and say button dot layer. And if you start typing in shadow, there are a couple things. There's a color, there's a path, radius and opacity. So the radius I'm going to go ahead and say is going to be 10. Let's go ahead and say layer and we are going to now say the opacity this guy is going to be maybe one now let's go ahead and just see what that looks like that's not opacity let's try that one more time there's opacity we're going to go ahead and say one and it's not meant to be one but just for the sake of seeing what it looks like so you guys get an idea there is our actual uh, shadow you can see it is quite obnoxious and how uh, how dense it looks so we'll go ahead and uh, change this to 0 0.3, that's generally, or 0 0.4, that's generally a pretty good, uh, pretty good opacity for a shadow. So we definitely can see that there is this shadow going on behind it. Uh, it looks pretty good in both light mode and dark mode. And the other thing I want to point out here is we're no longer masking to bounds for the layer. And the reason we're not doing that is because it screws up the shadow, actually. If you go ahead and uncomment it and run it, you can actually see here that the shadow is basically non-existent. You can't even see it. And the reason it's doing that is because the layer is uh, basically clipping at the circular radius of the button itself. So if you do want to have the shadow, go ahead and remove that if you had added it in the first place. So cool. So our button's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and add an action to it and we shall wrap up. So uh, at the end of the day, it's nothing more than a pretty standard button. So we can go ahead and say floating action button, add target self. And we're going to go ahead and say this is did tap the button. And we're going to say this is for touch up inside. I'll go ahead and create that function here. So the other thing I'll say about these floating action button uh, types of UI is they're pretty nice if you have like a compose type of experience or, you know, to add something since it doesn't clutter up your UI, you don't need a dedicated tab or anything for it, uh, but you can still have that action at your disposal uh, for your users. So we'll go ahead and say uh, add something message will be floating button tapped and this will be of type alert and I'm just going to go ahead and present it here. The other thing I'll actually mention here as well is Google loves to copy or not copy. I should say loves to use this floating action button uh, design principle in their iOS apps. Uh, the reason I was saying copy is because it's kind of a concept that got popularized on Android. And as uh, Google has kind of led the charge with their own apps that are used by, you know, millions and, and billion plus of users, uh, it's become more prevalent in apps like, uh, you know, Google Workspace apps, so like Calendar and Google Docs uh, and what have you. So we can go ahead and tap on it and boom, there is our alert. And that has been a floating button in UI kit in a nutshell. If you haven't dropped a like down below, don't forget to do so. Hit subscribe if you're into iOS and want to stick around. As always, code will be available for Patreon supporters, so that link is down below as well. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.